Good evening and welcome to NYC Arts. I'm Paula Zahn at the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. From its beginnings over a hundred years ago, American modern dance was greatly influenced by such notable women as Isadora Duncan, Ruth St. Dennis, and Martha Graham, pioneers whose works are still being performed today. Their art was largely a rejection of the formal structure of ballet and its subject matter, which was, and still is, dominated by men. Tonight we look at the world of dance through the lens of three contemporary female choreographers who are now taking the lead, each one working in a very different style of movement. Pam Tanowitz is a postmodern choreographer whose journey from an emerging dance maker to internationally acclaimed artist was neither fast nor easy. Ashley Bowder, a principal dancer with the New York City Ballet, recently formed her own company, the Ashley Bowder Project, to give women and minorities a chance to create new works. The choreography of Camille A. Brown is based on social dance and has been seen on Broadway and on television. But her concert dance is infused with activism and storytelling. I started choreographing my junior year at Ohio State University. And it was something that I sort of fell into in a class. And I realized that I liked making things more than being in things. I loved performing, but there was something about solving problems that was interesting to me. I worked in New York for over 20 years before I got any sort of recognition. I'm actually thankful for the fact that I didn't get that much attention in the early chunk of my career because I was able to concentrate on the actual making of dance instead of worrying about other things. I always had a day job to have money for that purpose as well. So I always worked full time and choreographed up until just two years ago. I've been lucky to have gotten a bunch of different grants in the past couple years. I got the um, Baryshnikov Art Center Cage Cunningham Award, so that obviously was a huge help. It's hard. You have to be scrappy, you have to be imaginative, you have to be creative. Um, it's very hard to, you want to focus on your dance, but you also can't ignore that you have to put some time into the business aspect of it. Dancers play a very dignified role in my work. So when I work with a dancer, I have to fall in love with them, basically. It's not only about technique. I also have to like them and love them as people because you spend way more time in the studio than you do performing. And I don't really have auditions. I've had one or two in my life, but I usually see a dancer at a show and I'll fall in love with them, you know, seeing them in another person's work or just meeting them. I, I actually hired somebody who I just liked talking to. I love collaborating with them. I plan out a bunch of things, but the more planned you are, the more you can go off your plan. I love accidents and um, I actually incorporate a lot of things that are mistakes that are way more interesting, I think, than what I originally thought of. So I love to make space for all that. Unison shoulder step, that's what I'll call it. And a lot of my work is my steps and my vision, but it, there's a lot of freedom in that and they infuse it with themselves. So a lot of times when you look at my dances, the dancers look different. The, the approach to the movement is the same, but the actual execution of it is different. And that's interesting to me. Modern dance was founded by women. You know, it's Isadora, it's Martha, it's Doris Humphrey. And ballet, there's always been men in charge. Like Balanchine, you don't just get a choreographer. Like you don't just get a Justin Peck or a Christopher Wheeldon. They were cultivated. They had chances to experiment. You know, and so what happens sometimes, I think, is that when people say, where are the women ballet choreographers? Where? And then they go, then they hire a bunch. And then the work is not as deep or is, or for, you know, but it was the, that choreographer's like second dance. How is it gonna be? The Goldberg variations had to be all about the music. 
So the piano had to be in the middle of the stage because that's what the whole piece was going to be about. I knew the piano could not be like every other piano ballet, downstage right or downstage left. Jerry Robbins did that. I don't need to do that. What am I going to say that's different? In the Goldberg Variations, the dancers not only relate to each other, but they relate to Simona. She's there, and in rehearsal, I thought it was weird if they didn't look at her. They had to acknowledge her. So I tried to figure out sort of nuanced, subtle ways for them to acknowledge her in the beginning. And then there is one point where a dancer sits next to her. It's really all about making the work. If you really want to make a good dance, that's what you have to do is focus on the work and what you want to say. And it's hard to make something from nothing. So uh, you have to be really hell-bent on doing it because it's, um, it's hard. <laughs> In 2015, New York City Ballet had a fall gala, and our fall gala always has several new choreographers on the program. And they put a poster out on the front of our theater, a black and white poster, of the headshots of all the choreographers, and they looked identical. They were all white men. And up until that point, I hadn't really thought about that. But there it was literally staring you in the face, all these white men making new ballets. Not one of them didn't deserve to be there, but at the same time I thought, where are the women? This is a world issue. But as I thought about it and thought about the world of ballet and the world in general, I thought there was a statement that I could make with my project, something that meant something to me and could be more meaningful in the ballet world, and that is promoting women and inclusion in my choices. So I started hiring a bunch of female choreographers, only female composers, and went from there. For Symphony Space, I wanted to first create my own ballet. I wanted to choreograph. You can do each one on a slight diagonal if you start back, like on that line. I used all New York City ballet dancers for In Pursuit Of, and I take company class every day. So basically, I looked around class and you know, everybody has their favorite dancers and the people they think are talented, and I approached the people that I, I wanted to work with. The ballet was in four movements, and each one was based on a different kind of nationality and national dance. So the first movement was called Warrior, and it was based on Maasai jumping dances. The second movement was based on the Polish mazurka. So we incorporated a skirt that when they turned, it didn't flare out at the ends. It was kind of like a teacup. And the third movement was Sufi dancing, which is whirling dervishes. We tried to never have them stop turning in the pas de deux, which was kind of fun to do for eight minutes. <laughs> and then the fourth movement was, it's called Freedom, and it's based on you know American contemporary dance. I wanted to be choreographed on also, and wanted to step out of my comfort zone. So I chose to approach the modern choreographer, Liz Gehring, who has her own company, and ask her if she would do a duet for me with a friend, Sarah Mearns. Sarah and I have been dressing roommates for many years now at New York City Ballet, and we rarely ever share the stage. At first, Sarah and I really, we just were laughing in rehearsal because we couldn't get grounded like a modern dancer. We couldn't stop pointing our toes or take our focus down. And we had a lot of, a lot of laughs with Liz because she, she kept telling us, you're performing to the balcony. She said, in modern dance, we don't dance for houses that big. <laughs> and we did have sore quad muscles for the first few weeks working on that. But the challenge of doing that, I found awesome. To step outside of my point shoes and tutus and really get down in the ground and feel a different form of dance. Because, you know, as a, as a ballet dancer, you kind of get this snobby attitude of, well, this is the most difficult type of dance. You know, not everybody can do ballet. And yeah, that's true, not everybody can do ballet, but I found it extremely difficult to do modern. And I don't think everybody can do that either. 
For any choreographer, it's important to be cultivated by many sources, to have a mentor, to have the opportunity to succeed and to fail. Well, I believe social dance is an art form. So uh, the definition or my definition is basically something that happens in a community where people are social. So when I'm teaching, I usually break up the phrase social dance and I ask people, well, what does it mean to be social? Oh, it means to interact with each other. And then you put dance. So you're working. So the individuals come together and they create a community. But if you look, everyone has their own individual take on that. And that's what social dance is. It places us in a moment. It helps us express ourselves, resist in a lot of cases and to communicate when words can't be said or words aren't enough. So when I'm working in my company and we're generating movement, it is very much, I align myself very much with what social dance is in terms of a structure and then the individual creativity. So it's not just enough for me to have a phrase and teach it to them. The phrase has to come alive based on the choices of the individual and it's organic. And a lot of times when I'm coming in the studio, I have an idea, but I'm also letting myself be okay with not always knowing and discovering. And I think that's, for me, even though it's challenging and it's scary in my process, the unknown, there's a danger, but that's how you find your material. My work is for everyone but it's for the black community and there are things that happen within the black community that people outside of the community don't necessarily understand uh, and I'm okay with that. Black Girl I, I had a duality kind of going on. I wanted it to be culturally specific but I also wanted to talk about universal themes so anyone who was not black or not a girl could look and go oh I, I see my childhood or, okay, I had a sister, I have a mother, I, I can connect. I was watching one of the live musicals and going, wow, it would really be great to choreograph for that. That's not gonna happen anytime soon. I don't have that experience. And I freaked out in the beginning when I got the call. They were basically offering me the job David Laveau, who is the director for Jesus Christ Superstar, he had a very powerful, real, raw vision. He wanted a deconstructed kind of version of taking a, a table apart. And one of the things I thought was, well, what if the tables and the chairs just started moving and spinning and going different ways? We were saying that it's bolts of energy that have to pierce through the screen because this is different. Whereas we're in live theater, you're feeling it, you're feeling the emotion, sometimes you're getting the sweat in your eye, you know, I mean, it's right there with you, but because it's television, we have to be aware that our presence needs to be more expansive than ever. Jesus Christ. What's next is I am trying to figure out how to balance a career in concert dance and also musical theater. I'm also interested in directing and choreographing in musical theater. So we're gonna lift that up into the space and um, hopefully that comes down with some opportunities for that. For me, it's about the opportunities, definitely, but it's also about the growth. And if I'm growing, I can't ask for anything else. <laughs>